Here's the next example of how to calculate the intensity of the light that passes through a set of polarizers. In this case, we have two polarizers, one that's directed vertically, up and down, and one that's directed at an angle relative to the first one. Let's say that the angle relative to the first one is an angle of 30 degrees. What will be the intensity of the light passing through the second polarizer? And, of course, we can do that one step at a time. First of all, intensity 1 relative to intensity 0 can be easily found by saying intensity 1 is equal to half of the original intensity because when light passes through the first polarizer, it loses half of its original intensity. But now, how do you figure out what happens when the light then passes through the second polarizer? Well, it turns out that the equation you use, I sub 2, is equal to I sub 1 times the cosine squared of the angle between the first and second polarizer. So let's call this theta sub 1. And um, plugging in the numbers, uh, so this would be, oh, I want to say theta uh, I sub 1. So this is equal to I sub 1 times the cosine of 30 degrees, and that would be the cosine squared of 30 degrees. And so, whoop, there's my I sub 1. And let's see what that is equal to. So we take the cosine of 30 right here, and then we, we square that. And we can say that this is equal to 0 0.75 times I sub 1. So which means if there's a second polarizer behind the first one, and that polarizer is angled at 30 degrees relative to the first one, then you lose some additional intensity. Now, what will I sub 2 then be in terms of I sub 1, or I should say I sub 0? Then of course you say, all right, that means that I sub 2, which is equal to 0 0.75 times I sub 1, and since I sub 1 is 1 half of I sub 0, we then plug in 1 half, of I sub 0, and so we can then say that I sub 2 is equal to uh, 0, and I was going to write in percentage, but I'll do that later, so 0 0.375 times I sub 0. So that would be another way of writing that, we can say that I sub 2 is equal to 37.5% of the original intensity coming through the first polarizer. All right. What do you think it would be like if we now directed the second polarizer perpendicular or 90 degrees relative to the first one? Hmm. So then in that case, we'd have the first polarizer that would be oriented like this, the second polarizer which would be oriented like this, and so that we know that the angle theta sub 1 is now equal to 90 degrees. And I think you already know what's going to happen, because if we then plug in 90 degrees for the cosine, the cosine of 90 degrees is 0, which means no intensity, no light makes it through whatsoever. So what we can then see is that if we had inbound light, which is I sub naught in intensity, then of course I sub 1, and um, I sub 1 would therefore be equal to 1 half I sub 0, but then through the second one, I sub 2 would be equal to 0. No light would make it through the second one if the second polarizer was perpendicular to the first one. Matter of fact, if you have some polarized sunglasses at home, and maybe you have two pairs, if you take one glass and hold it upright, and then the second glass hold it perpendicular to the first one, you look through it, you'll see that no light gets through those sunglasses that way. So that's why polarization works so well. All right, I have a few more examples where we're going to put polarizers at various angles with each other and more than two and see what happens after that.